This is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying welcome back and just look at all of that stuff. Got a big thrift haul for you. But first I will announce that the tune we started off with was called Oh Doris and that was recorded in the late 20s on the Edison Diamond Disc label. That The lyric just cracks me up in that. I don't know if you heard it or not but basically it's about this little college vamp, little college flapper by the name of Doris. But my favorite line is, Oh, Doris, do this favor for us. Tell us, Doris, where do you live? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And when you see her on the campus, she doesn't really mean to vamp us. Okay, I'll stop with the 20s lingo and dive right in. Now, most of this stuff is currently for sale on or in my eBay store. Some of it, a few things have already sold and a couple of things I'm keeping, I'll be sure to tell you so that you know. And let me hold this camera still, okay. Uh, oops, I guess I'm jiggling a little bit. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's start off with this guy right here. Now this just sold last night for $102. I picked this up for a dollar. Now the reason I'm showing you this is because Resellers, when you're, uh, don't ignore boxes of old photographs. Yes, it's true. Most pictures of grumpy old people don't sell for much. But when you find something like this with a person in a uniform, butcher, baker, candlestick maker, uh, doesn't matter. People love to collect these old photographs. And as I said, I paid a dollar for this. It sold for 103. Pretty good. Don't know who he was specifically but if we zoom in we can see he was a lieutenant and I was able to really zoom in on his badge and find out that uh, he was actually a uh, police lieutenant in the Pittsburgh Police Department and so this was this would have been taken sometime around the turn of the century or just before and I'm anxious to get that out in the mail uh, today okay was real excited to find this left in piece, especially unbroken. It sells for about $30 online. This is um, currently available in my eBay shop. I'll let you see the bottom. There's the uh, left in sticker we're all familiar with. Okay. Great that the little angel here doesn't have any chips uh, or breaks in her wings or in her neck. No repairs on that. So, and as I said, that sells for about 30. This out of the way. This is a pedal uh, fire. Mm, hold on now. It's an anchor hocking lotus leaf dish. It reminds me a lot of uh, Hazel Atlas's platinite. Now it's unmarked. Fire King didn't mark these as a general rule uh, it is a type oops it is a type of glass but it's got a fired on finish so you want to be careful often these will be scratched up this is a few bits of paint loss but very very good for for this dish since that's a uh, fired on finish these came in in a set of four the four different pastel colors um, and there was a a dish that sat right in the middle of the blossom that's what's missing from this and it was a luncheon set a dessert set this could be used as a plate or when it when you put the little bowl in here you could put whatever you want egg salad tuna salad uh, and these this plate should sell for about eight dollars it's not online yet because I may keep it and wait till I put together an entire set uh, what I wanted to show you was this this is a uh, 
Portuguese, I'll let you see on the bottom, it's a Portuguese vase or flower pot. Uh, and I picked it up probably to keep because I don't have a lot of springtime, uh, Easter time things, and this is great for spring. But look how nice it looks right there. Isn't that fantastic as an underplate? So we could do something like that, put a hyacinth in there, and you're all set for uh, Easter Sunday. So I think I'm going to keep that. <laughs> um, up here is a graniteware coffee pot that is currently for sale online. And this is graniteware, of course, 20, 19, 30. It needs to be, it needs a good cleaning if you're going to make coffee in it. Um, it's blue and white, although it may show up black in this video. A couple of uh, chips on the bottom, pretty typical for graniteware. Uh, that should sell for, oh, I don't know, 15 to 18 bucks, something like that. This is also... Uh, up for auction right now. It currently has a bid of five dollars. It's a biscuit tin with a uh, galleon ship on it from the 19, probably dates about 1930, maybe the late 20s. And uh, let's see back here. Okay, not going to open it, but it's in good shape. Sailing ships as a as a artistic motif was popular in the uh, in the 20s and 30s. Very excuse me, very popular in the 20s and 30s. In the 50s and 60s, we saw a lot of tables that looked just like this. I remember sitting at a kitchen table and doing math homework. You could actually write on this with a pencil and then just with a washcloth wipe it right off. Does anybody else remember that? Did anybody else do that? This is what's called cracked ice, and it's made by Bolta. It's upside down, I know. Uh, two little dinner trays or cafeteria trays, and the half size, you know, they're usually, one tray is usually that big, but this is a smaller one. These hopefully will sell for about 10 bucks each. And nice and shiny, no utensil marks. I think I paid 50 cents each for those. These are uh, also currently up for sale uh, let's see made in Japan would be this piece right here this is a very heavy corn platter and if we turn it over we can see that made in Japan sign or stamp right there is um, a 1920s 30s design the foil stickers are what we saw after the war the 60s and the 50s and the 70s this kind of a back mark here for Made in Japan is sometime from 1921 up into the First World War. So, I'm sorry, Second World War. No chips, no cracks, beautiful condition. Uh, it, this is not up for sale because there are several of them currently up for sale and they don't really bring a great deal of money. So I think I'm just gonna keep that and wait for the Jersey corn to come out this summer and I will be the hit, right, when I serve my sweet corn on that. This I picked up yesterday at the Philly AIDS thrift shop. Uh, okay, so let's not start an argument in the comments below. <laughs> it's not little Lulu and it's not little Audrey. Um, I know who they are and I was actually talking to my old college roommate yesterday and we were going back and forth about this. We both agree it's 1940s and it's probably just a generic uh, 1940s little girl in the style of little Lulu or uh, little Audrey. But listen, if anybody can specifically identify this as a character, I'd really like to know. I know who she looks like. And she's got USA printed on her knickers back there. Ooh, you see that? So, um, I don't know, maybe she is an obscure cartoon character that I'm not familiar with, but we can cross off little Audrey and little Lulu because one had black hair, one had red hair, and there were some other differences between those girls as well. So I don't know, but she's, that's really cute. I like that. Uh, I paid $15 for this and it should sell for between, that should sell for between well, we'll say 40 to 60. 
It's a Fenton Basket uh, Cranberry Opalescent. And it is an old one. It's not one of the repops from 2000 and whatever. Uh, no chips, no cracks. The Fenton collectors love their cranberry baskets. They come in lots of different sizes. So when you see those, pick them up. Here's a Depression Era Creamer. I'm sorry, Syrup Jug. This is unmarked on the bottom. Hazel Atlas Hocking Glass uh, could be. Um, I'm not sure, but it's in re really super shape. Great spring-loaded lid, uh, stainless steel lid in good shape too, um, and there's no there's no problems with it. Just a tiny bit. Is that rust on the spring? Ooh, we're gonna get botulism. No, we're not. Okay, so that's uh, also currently up for sale. Another photograph I picked up, which I'm not sure, I have not placed online yet. I picked this up just because. Wow. That is a cool photograph. Now, we, we, we let's take votes on this. Creepy. <laughs> or just stunningly beautiful. What do you think? I think it depends. I mean, if I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and that thing was on the wall opposite, opposite my bed. Okay, so we'll just leave that up to you. But I, I'm gonna I'm gonna vote for somewhere between creepy and somewhere between beautiful. All right, let's keep going. Here is a really nice stretch glass bowl. That particular uh, color is called uh, Persian Pearl. I think I went to church with a woman named Persian Pearl, uh, which I don't know how well in this light you're seeing it, but it's just stunningly beautiful. I'm not selling it. I'm going to put it in my stretch glass collection. It's a great big console bowl. I won't go into detail about stretch glass here because I've talked about it before. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about it, I did an old video, which I've We'll post the link below on the process of making stretch glass and how it differs from carnival glass and basically art glass. So check that out if you'd like to. Uh, it was also filmed right here in front of the fireplace with a whole bunch of beautiful uh, stretch glass, carnival glass and art glass. Uh, I paid less than $3 for this. And I almost got detached retina when I saw it. We will save those bookends for last. Let's go over here. We're almost done. That's a Hazel Atlas Amethyst Depression Glass Tumbler. It should sell for about five bucks. The pattern is called uh, Stacked Panel. Okay, Stacked Panel. Very good. Here are three pieces of uh, Japanese Nippon Noritake. This one here is the only one that's marked. We can clearly see here the Nippon mark. So it's all hand painted. Uh, it just serves a purpose as a decorative bowl. I wouldn't eat anything out of it. <laughs> そんな二度目三度目レストラン。ホークもつてが嬉しくて震えちゃう。そんな素敵な肩ならん、肩ならん。夢でいいから当てみたい。撮ってみたい。前で見せます。こんな私。Okay, there are no chips. So, by the way, these came from the Thrifty Irishman. If you watch me, you've seen me thrift there before. And uh, that's not a person, it's a shop. I paid $24 for all three pieces. So I was really excited. They were filthy, 
they had uh, they needed a good bath but I was excited to find them with no chips or cracks this one so this is currently uh, photographed but not on in my store yet it will be that's for sale that one's gonna be for sale this one is already uh, spoken for How do I know it's Norataki when there's nothing on the bottom? Just from handling several pieces of Norataki. Norataki loves these quirky little handles. That thick applied uh, enamel or paint, whatever you want to call it, the decoration there. There's a name for it. Um, it's, it's just typical of their work. The way that it's painted. The form, it's just screaming Norataki circa 1915, 1920. Okay, so we'll set this one down. And this one is already uh, sold. This one I like the best. It actually has a sort of a bisque or a, well, I'll say a satin finish to it, which you may not be able to see, but I'll do my best to, to show you. A very soft satin finish to it. Very nicely decorated. All the way around. And they did decorate these on the back as well. Usually a little less intricately as the front. Okay, I'll put you back. So there we go. I think we covered everything except for, um, oh, the bookends. The bookends, let's grab, oh my goodness, let's grab one of them. Hopefully this is the one that you can clearly see. Hold on, folks. Uh, no, you can't, well, anyway. That right there is an armor shield and you can't really see under here, but it says, C.S. Allen. Uh, it's much easier to see on the other bookend, but I recognized them as soon as I saw them as uh, C.S. Allen armor bookends because they made wonderful bronze bookends in the 1920s and 30s. And this particular set of bookends I've had since December. The thrift shop put them out as Christmas decorations because they thought that was Santa Claus. You can see where they would think that. But it's really just a, a, a happy, uh, content gentleman reading his book by the fireplace with his pup. So I'll give you a good look at them. You see the details, really fantastic on these. There's a lot of dust on them and we leave that. Don't take that off, that's called patina. Collectors love it. Now, these are actually plaster and they're dipped in bronze. You know the way people dipped baby shoes in bronze. There's the hook right there that would be, a wire would be attached to this and then these would be dipped down into a vat of bronze. It's plaster underneath. So, uh, and then it's cold painted. And because these were hand painted cold, you get <clears throat> different variations to the painting. Uh, these are great. Original paint, they haven't been repainted. Uh, these are currently up for auction and I'm hoping they'll sell for between 70 and 80. I paid they actually, this particular store didn't have the set priced as a set. They were selling them $9.99 each, each, but I was happy to pay $20 for a set of bookends that are definitely worth at least $80. And we'll put that one back. Okay, so backing up again, I think that's it. If I missed anything, just ask me in the comments below. Um, the link to my eBay shop will be underneath this video as well as a link to the video on stretch glass. So this is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.